Well, Victor Wembinyama has been getting some effusive praise throughout the NBA's typically inept and moronic media as of late. But in this specific instance, it's for a good reason. He has been historically excellent, as Wemby could possibly be one of, if not the best rookies we have seen in at least this century. Since the year 2000, there have only been six rookies to average at least 20 points per game, most notably LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Luka Doncic. But Wemby isn't just scoring 21 points per game on 47% from the field. He is also averaging 10 rebounds and 3.5 assists, becoming just the second rookie in the last 24 years to average a double-double joining only, wait for it, Blake Griffin. Which, let's take a sidebar here, what the hell happened to that guy? Look at these rookie numbers. 23 points per game in his first year, which is the highest point per game average by any rookie, dating all the way back to Allen Iverson in 1996-97, and Griffin did it while shooting nearly 51% from the field, and most ironically, playing in all 82 games that season. Ironic, because it was his lack of durability and health issues which were his ultimate undoing, as his rookie line constituted a career high in both points and rebounds per game, as his body has systematically betrayed him. With Griffin playing over 61 games in just six seasons of his 15-year career. All of this to say, nothing in sports or the NBA is guaranteed, especially for a player with the size of Wembenyama. But if he can stay healthy, my God, the ceiling is the roof. The ceiling is the roof. Let's make it happen. Because Wembenyama is not just posting that aforementioned 20 and 10 per game currently. He is also leading the NBA in total blocks and in blocks per game by a substantial margin. And speaking of durability, he has played in 55 of the Spurs' 61 games. Oh, and one final thing, this kid is shooting 33% from three right now, and he is attempting five per game at seven foot four. All of his transcendent excellence begs the question of just how exactly are the Spurs abysmal ass right now? It's a complete crap. Speaking of the media though, and effusive praise, there is arguably no coach ever that has elicited more of it than Greg Popovich. This despite his uh, general truculent demeanor. Did I, did I just say that we were pathetic on defense? Well, right, so what would what, you like me to do? What, what, would you like me to slip my throat? Or And Popovich is the all-time wins leader in NBA history with 1,379, while his five NBA championships are more than anyone in history besides Phil Jackson's 11 and Red Auerbach's 9. Yet Greg hasn't been adding many wins to the old record book this year, with the Spurs currently sitting in the 15th spot in the West. That's out of 15 teams, by the way, and sporting an atrocious 13-48 and 48 record, trailing only Detroit and Washington for worst record in the league and the coveted ping-pong ball lead in the pending NBA draft lottery which is likely what all of this losing is really about. Yeah, I'm suggesting Popovich and the Spurs are in full-blown tank mode currently. This is completely BS. This is shame. And why not? It's worked for Popovich before, as he came on as an assistant with the Spurs in 1988, one year after San Antonio took David Robinson with the first overall pick. And after four years as an assistant, Popovich would take over the top spot in 1992. Just five years later, of course, in 1997, the Spurs would win the lottery again, this time, of course, legendarily, selecting Tim Duncan with the first overall pick. And now, seven seasons after his retirement, another generational big coming courtesy of the ping pong ball gods. And it seems like Popovich is trying to uh, maximize his placement in this year's lottery by losing as many games as he possibly can, that is. And the strategy makes perfect sense for Greg Popovich, who is generally credited as the godfather of one of the most disgusting strategies in modern day NBA, 
load management. <laughs> but of course, you might be looking at the draft prospects this year and wondering just what exactly are the Spurs tanking for? But with San Antonio projected currently to get a top three pick, Wemby's fellow Frenchman Alex Saar, another seven foot one mutant, would be a possibility. And okay, I see what we're doing here, Greg. A pairing of these two would have a feel hearkening back to the Duncan Robinson era in a team up that would present nightmares for opposing teams on the defensive end. But there are a number of other players that make sense depending on just where exactly the balls fall for Gray including Zachary Rizice, also from France, who is currently slated as the number one overall pick in the draft. The Serbian Nikola Topic and Lithuanian-American Matas Bazelis, who is currently playing in the NBA's G League. With such a variety of foreign-born players headlining the upper tier of this year's draft lottery, it serves as another stunning example of the global takedown of the NBA as the winner of the last five league MVPs have all been non-Americans, while Popovich will be right at home in scouting and selecting one of them. Since the legendary Spurs dynasty was headlined for years by Frenchman Tony Parker, Argentinian Manu Ginobili, and of course Duncan who was born in the Virgin Islands. Luckily for San Antonio and their budding, bright future, their Hall of Fame coach feels right at home deploying such dastardly tactics as multi-year tank jobs to get down in the dirt and scrounge for as many balls as he can get his hands on.